G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday sort of afternoon here in Australia, market cap down ever so slightly, so I was up about 1.8% yesterday, it's down 1.6% today, so it really is just, you know, kind of super volatile and all over the place, but Bitcoin is holding 42, sort of and a half thousand, which is good, but again, we're still not out of the woods. But first things first, when I say things like that, I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm simply just telling you what I'm, the feeling that I'm getting from seeing things in the market. So I always need you to remember that. You need to make your own decisions and, you know, get your, you know, number one, you should always have your own opinion. You shouldn't get your opinion from somebody else. But get your information from a whole vast of different sources. Don't ever trust just one source. Not me, not some other YouTuber, not some person from Twitter, not any one person. Take a whole stack of information in and then you make your own decision based on the information that's available. But at least try to make sure that the information you're getting is hopefully from somebody who is at least somewhat knowledgeable. And I'm not saying I'm not knowledgeable. You need to make your own mind up whether I am. I believe I am. I've been in the space for a while. But hey, everyone can tell you that they're knowledgeable. Again, you've got to make your own decision about who you trust and who you, yeah, you know, take some information from to then form your own decision. All right, let's move on. So, yep, market is down, holding on to 2.1 trillion, which is nice, but we were up a fair bit higher. Bitcoin dominance still ranging around 38%. Uh, not a lot of volume at the moment. And gas prices still ranging around that kind of $10, $11 mark. All right, considering the market's down 1.6%, what's performed well in the last 24 hours? All right, near protocol. So a lot of uh, VCs have put money into near protocol and that has what's helped the price. It's up like 200% in the last 30 days. So just be very careful uh, chasing something like that. Look, that's not to say it can't go up another, you know, couple of hundred percent from here. It could. But, you know, you just you want to be careful buying things at all time highs. And I think near protocol would probably have to be close. And even if not, it's up 200 percent. VCs that got in a while ago, you know, they could sell for a profit. And I'm not saying they're going to. Again, never financial advice. Just be careful chasing the pumps and remembering that we go up and then down and then up and then down. But we're still in a downwards trending channel. So just remember that we still could have further lower to go. So look, it may be the best price to get in right now. It may not be is all I'm trying to say. One double digit gainer in the top 100 and then we just got some single digit gainers. Remembering that the market is down overall. Right, considering it's down then, what hasn't performed so well? What's been hit the hardest in the top 100? All right, uh, compound die. I don't understand that, how it's down 8.5%, but that's not good. Multi-collateral die is down 8%. So again, I, there must be something going on there, and that does not sound good for die at all because it's supposed to be pegged around a dollar and is way off at the moment. Possibly some kind of hack or something going on. I don't know. That seems a long way uh, to be sort of out. Sorry, compound die. That's not even a dollar. That is uh, one cent down to two cents. So yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but that one, uh, multi-collateral die to be down uh, basically sort of nine cents. You know, they usually only vary a couple of cents. So I don't know. I'll have to have a look into that, but it's too late now to uh, sort of find that story. All right, helium down. Uh, Rune Thor chain down, Gala continues to come down, like I said, I sold out of that, it was just down too far, and considering I think there's more to go, uh, and the tokenomics, a lot of the gaming coins aren't so great, so I decided to I sell at a loss, and again, I didn't put a whole lot of money in, so it hasn't really affected me, and I've put it into things that I'm just a little bit more confident on, and I'll have to go back and have a look at the gaming sector again, but it was the tokenomics uh, that really started to worry me. But that's not to say they can't go up and go up a whole lot. They already did. All right, uh, Elrond is down. Shiba Inu's down. Look, obviously the market's down. So there's a number of coins that are down. But none of them are down in the double-digit ranges. And that's where you really got to worry, particularly if it's stable coins. That is a big worry. I'll have to look into that and find out what's going on. All right, here's why I am just, like I said before, I'm not going crazy on altcoins. Look what the Bitcoin chart showed us. It got up to this line and we got rejected cleanly from it. Now that doesn't mean we can't just have a quick pull down and break out and go higher. We absolutely could, but the trend is your friend. So until I see the trend change, 
I'm just I'm not going to chase too many things at all. I've told you this before. If there's projects I like and they get to a certain point, absolutely I'll buy some. But it really just will be a small bit. It's not going to be any kind of large plays until Bitcoin changes. I need to see Bitcoin change first or Ethereum. They're both kind of on an even keel in my opinion now. I don't think the market's completely driven by Bitcoin. It can be somewhat driven by Ethereum as well. But if those two are just in a downwards trending channel, which they are, well, then the rest of the market's going to follow suit. You'll have coins that'll pump one day, but then they'll be down a couple of days later. And eventually they're pumping, going down. Pumping, but not as high, going down. Pumping, not as high. And this is what we're doing at the moment. Now, look, that could have been the bottom. I'm praying like everyone else is that 39,000 was the bottom. That would be great because it means we're only going up from here. But I am just still scared that we're going to see this. And not scared scared again i'm not panic selling i am still buying stuff on occasions as i've said i'm just not making any big moves i'm not putting too much money into the markets yet i'm sitting on the cash that i have and again you know my dca and my sort of week like week nightly fortnightly a little bit into a bitcoin a little bit into ethereum but mainly just holding on to the cash until I feel or see a change, whichever one it is. Generally, you're probably going to see it before you really feel it. But, uh, and you know, you got to be careful with your feelings. Feelings are 100% accurate, but in all fairness, neither is TA either. You can have a breakout. It can be something like this. We can have a big breakout and it gets back to here and then everyone thinks, that's it, it's changed. And then we still go down here anyway. So buyer beware. All right, something else we want to look at. Again, the total market cap, like I said, we're still just really ranging around here. You know, we can get up to kind of, you know, 2.5, even up to 3 trillion. Gee, we've been down as low as 1.2 trillion, but really just kind of ranging within this kind of space here mostly. And so we went up and we had a pullback. So now we just got to wait and see. And look, we could travel sideways for months, but I'm thinking that this is really where I want to start kind of buying in. Down around the kind of 1.8, 1.7 trillion dollar level is where I think would be a good place to start making some some buys. And it's just that, ladies and gentlemen, some buys. I'm not going too crazy until there's a confirmed change. Like for this, this is the downwards trending. We need to break out of this. But even if we do break out of it, and I've said this before, what's generally going to be bullish is say we break out here, is that it probably comes back and retest it so we could still be coming down and setting again in a low like that it could be even lower again it could be maybe we've got to come down here again to that 1.8 trillion dollar mark before we start making our way back up but at the moment we just basically keep getting rejected at it so that is what i'm looking out for i'm not confident that we're out of the woods just yet whoops sorry uh, that's still drawing All right i'll come back and fix that later here is something that I am looking at, ladies and gentlemen. Immutable X. I said a little while ago that I got a 1% a one position in Immutable X. I think it was a little bit less than 1%. It's definitely less than 1% now. And the reason I really like this is some of the people that have got involved, Galaxy Digital, Coinbase, but zero gas fees. Instant. And it's on Ethereum, ladies and gentlemen. Ethereum, with all its gas fees and that, uh, which are horrendous at times, it's still the number one chain by a country mile. There's no one else that even comes close. Most of the NFTs and everything are on Ethereum. Well, Immutable X is going to do it for zero gas fees. Now, I, can't, I couldn't find the story. I didn't have a whole lot of time. But there was a big player, I think, in the gaming industry, because this isn't just NFTs. It's gaming as well. But they were on Polygon. And they left Polygon to come to Immutable X. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Polygon. They do really cheap fees, but zero gas. You can't really beat zero gas. Now, they are very, very new. They're not even in the top 100. So I am not telling you to go out and buy this. Excuse me. I went out and bought some, and I'm down 30%. So... Yeah, just again, if Bitcoin, like I've been talking about, is going down to, you know, $32,000 and we're currently at $42,000, Immutable X is probably going to, you know, really get hit. Let's have a look at the Immutable chart though. It started at 15 cents, came out at 15 cents of its ICO. It rocketed straight up to $4.72. 
we're currently below that price so that's why I'm looking at it I bought it at around about sort of I think just on five dollars uh, was where I got my first uh, position in it but again it's like I'm pretty sure it was less than one percent but it was around about there so at five dollars and that's after it had been up at nearly ten dollars not too far off so it was a near 50 percent discount that's why I'd heard about it, I'd looked a little bit into it, I like the team, there's two brothers from Australia uh, that sort of started it and they teamed up with some guys over in Israel to come up with it and I just thought, and again, zero gas fees, that's what I like the most and on Ethereum, I looked at their, you know, the people who invested in it and things like that and I thought, yep, $5 doesn't sound like too bad a buy and so I'm buying in somewhere, I don't know, around about sort of probably here and now it's dropped down and it could go lower ladies and gentlemen that's the thing I want you to remember I'm not telling you to buy this I'm just telling you I am buying some I already have bought some I bought at a higher price and I'm gonna buy some more in the not too distant future if it continues to go down how low can it go I mean that's the million dollar question I don't know but I do like the team I do like what they're about I do like the partnerships that they've got so this is an altcoin that I'm looking to get a better position in. I'd like this to take up at least sort of one to maybe sort of two to three percent of my entire portfolio based on the team and the partnerships and things like that. That's what's got me super excited about it. But it is outside of the top 100, ladies and gentlemen. So it is a, a mid sort of cap, I think you could still possibly call it, to low cap. So they are very dangerous. The upside, if it goes up, is probably going to be quite substantial. But the downside, if it goes down, is probably going to be quite substantial as well. So this is a pick for me, but that's a personal opinion. It is nothing other than that. You make up your own mind. You go and do your own research on it. I like it at this price, but that's not to say we couldn't end up down at 62 cents or something. For me, I will just continue to average into it if it gets down to prices. At the moment, it's $3.50. I may buy a little bit more in the next kind of day or two. We'll have to wait and see, particularly over the weekend. We'll see if we go lower. But I'm really more looking at around about kind of the $2.50 to $2 mark. And definitely anything sort of around about a dollar, I'm very keen on. But again, I'm not going all out, ladies and gentlemen. I need to see a change from Bitcoin. But that's one of my coins that I'm looking at. All right, some news that I want to look at. I brought this to you a while ago. I said that Tonga was considering using Bitcoin as legal tender. Well, it looks like they're moving forwards with this and it could be happening by November. So that's still a while away and it's November this year. It's not an old article. This has just come out. So it still could be months away and who knows where Bitcoin's going to be by then. But it said the country's legal tender bill for Bitcoin is modelled on and is almost identical to that of El Salvador. Now, it was reportedly working together with Jack Maulers, the CEO of Strike, an architect of El Salvador's Bitcoin project, to bring the BTC legal framework to Tonga. Look, it'll be these little countries that will do the best, but it's still going to be about when they can make it happen. El Salvador was the first, and I mean, they've been buying in since, I think, you know, 30000 sub $30,000. You know, it'd be a shame if Tonga got in in November and it's at, you know, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something like that that would be a really bad time i hope tonga is smart enough to know that they need to you know slowly but surely sort of buy in be buying dips and not just go all out at any one price because particularly if it's at two hundred and fifty thousand, and then all of a sudden it drops down to you know i don't know 30 40 000, basically where we are now that would really hurt tonga uh so yeah very interesting and it's not just South American countries, although I heard Argentina is looking to do uh, something similar. And things like that, and a spot Bitcoin ETF will also help push the price up. But again, if we get to 250000 and Tonga get in, you know, a dip will really hurt that country. So I hope they're, you know, going to be smart about, you know, getting in. And no matter really what the price is, unless it's super low, if somehow in November Bitcoin's down at, I don't know, ten thousand dollars or something like that. That might not be a bad time to get in, but it may also go lower. So just again, something they need to keep in mind. But other countries are coming, and it'll be the smaller nations first. But it won't take long. Again, there's rumours going around that you know they think at least one big central bank uh, may use Bitcoin as a form of reserve. 
And the thing is, it always just takes one to do it. And then you wait and see, will there be a second? Because sometimes there's only one and everything goes wrong and no one else does it. But usually there's someone who does it. It seems to work out all right for a while. So a second one does it. And usually once a second one does it, a third and fourth will happen pretty quick. And then, provided nothing kind of drastic happens, it just starts this kind of, you know, that trickle, trickle. I was going to say a tidal wave, but it's trickle, trickle. And then eventually they all get in. And I think El Salvador is going to do extremely well in the long run. Mid to short term, they could still suffer some fairly significant losses. But I think five to 10 years time with the Bitcoin they're buying and Bitcoin City and mining Bitcoin with the volcanoes and things like that, I think they will do extremely well. And I think that's something Tonga could look at as well because I know they've got volcanoes and that over in Tonga. So they could look to start um, mining some Bitcoin as well. But again, you know, a little bit different kind of circumstances uh, and, you know, whether they've got volcanoes that aren't active. I know they have some uh, active volcanoes out that way, but I think they've been dormant for a while. So again, we'll have to wait and see. But another country looking to adopt Bitcoin. Again, El Salvador was the first and it looks like they may just be the first of many. Right, FTX US and Bitstamp USA are working to offer stock trading services. So again, this is the future. Banks are going to offer crypto services and these, you know, crypto exchanges, they're going to offer stock trading services in the future. And FTX US and Bitstamp US, you know, they're they're going to be ones at the forefront, although I think it'll be the other way around. First, the big banks will be offering crypto before these guys get to offer stocks. I think the C CFTC and things like that are going to, you know, look after their old friends in the traditional uh, finance world and make sure they can get into crypto first. But I do believe this is kind of the way of the future. Now, there's more institutional news as well. So Gemini has acquired uh, BitRIA. I don't know if I'm saying that or if it's Bitria. And that is to push crypto into the wealth management industry. So Bitria is a self, uh, sorry, a San Francisco-based startup that provides traditional portfolio management tools for use in crypto investments. And the goal of Bitria is to provide a platform for traditional asset managers and financial service advisors to use in helping their clients invest in cryptocurrency. So these things are coming. Now, again, I just think the, you know, the, the politicians, the powers that be in that, they're going to allow this to happen, but it's going to be held up for a while. Again, the, all the banks, the old finance, they're going to be into cryptocurrencies and have, you know, we already know that they're building services like that. And I, when I say building, buying other companies to offer that, and they will get all of that first. And then, you know, the crypto will be able to follow suit into things like stocks and things like this. This is all coming. And that's what makes me bullish long term. Short term to mid term still could get really ugly. We could go a lot lower. But sort of, um, again, I'm thinking more five to ten years. I think, yeah, you're going to see some real generational wealth created in cryptocurrencies not financial advice just my personal opinion but i think the next lot of millionaires billionaires trillionaires and all those kind of things are going to be people who got heavy into cryptocurrencies you know since bitcoin started like you know some of the people who you know the big bitcoin whales they are really going to be extremely wealthy in you know decades to come they're already extremely wealthy now but once it goes mainstream, and then if Ethereum does really well, and Solana, and Matic, and you know all these other ones, Immutable X, you name it, there will be mega riches for the people that got into the good projects early at good prices. But just don't come to crypto thinking you're going to be a millionaire overnight. It just it it really doesn't happen. Even the people that kind of get lucky don't become millionaires overnight. It could take them weeks or months. You know, like the person who built, you know, put $8,000 into SHIB, it took him or her or them or they, whoever it is, you know, months, nearly a year to turn $8,000 into $6 billion. That is a lot of money. And for some people, it feels like it's overnight until you put $8,000 into something and then it drops 50% and you panic and you go, oh my God, I had 8,000 now, I've got 4,000 and you panic sell, and then all of a sudden it does what SHIB did. And I'm not promoting SHIB or saying, you know, that's going to happen to you or too many people at all, but I'm sure that person who put $8,000 into SHIB probably had to see 
some downside before they saw that unbelievable upside. And that's the hard part. It's easy to see the, you know, thousands of percent uh, to the upside, but it's not so easy to go through the possibly sometimes, you know, near 100% downsides that you can see sometimes from coins, particularly if you were unfortunate enough to buy at an all-time high and you had to suffer through months of downside before you got uh, to get down to a low before it started to push up again. All right, where are we? Here, so for the Ripple fans out there, a judge has come out and said Ripple can access emails about the SEC's Ethereum speech. So what happens is there was a speech by a former official a while ago, and he concluded that Ethereum is not a security. Now, he did come out and say that he believed Ethereum was a security when it first came out, but that it is now decentralized enough to not be considered a security. And so there's a lot of talk going on in the industry, uh, in the crypto community as well, I should say, more so, more so than the industry, that that's how the formula should be, that you know there should be a grace period of a couple of years where projects can come out and if they can, you know, sufficiently get decentralized enough in, you know, whether it's one year, two years, four years, 10 years, whatever it is, I think a lot of people are, you know, kind of leaning more towards four, then they can be not a security and they don't have to worry about all the securities laws. But if they can't demonstrate that within the four years, well, then they fall under securities laws and they have to pay the money and, you know, all, all the rest of it. And I really like that idea. And I think Ripple are kind of really, they want this information hoping that someone will be able to you know, come out and say, well, that applies to Ripple. I'm not so sure if it applies to Ripple because Ripple still own nearly half of all the XRP out there. So, you know, what's decentralized enough? Is it 50 plus percent? Is it 70 percent? Is it 80 percent? You know what I mean? That, that's, that's the issue. We don't have that regulatory clarity at the moment, but it is interesting that the judge said, fair enough, you can have that information. So now that is going to be able to be disclosed. Is that going to help Ripple? Is it going to be enough for you know the judge to come out and say, yeah, I believe Ripple is now decentralized enough because Ripple own less than 50% of all XRP, but it's not by much. I think last it was 46, 47% of all XRP is still held by Ripple, which is a substantial amount, but I guess you could say that's more than 50%, so really it is decentralized. It's just whether it's decentralized enough that will be the question all right u.s inflation rates jumps 40 percent it's the highest sorry jumps uh seven percent it's the highest in the last 40 years so again this is why i like cryptocurrencies particularly ones that are fixed and most of them are fixed you know some have a hundred billion you know some have a million some have uh, less than that you know there's all different numbers depending but they are fixed the things you got to remember about stocks is whenever a company, if it's doing well, wants to make more money, they can just create more stocks. You can't do that with cryptocurrency. They can just do a new stock thing and then it's they double the amount of uh, stocks that are out there and then they can sell them on the open market. It doesn't work like that with cryptocurrencies. That is what I like. They are fixed. You know, you'd have to get basically a majority, i.e. more than 51%, of everyone to agree, which will be nearly impossible with really decentralized ones, easy with centralized ones, to say, all right, we're going to have twice as many coins, but the problem is then they're really only worth half as much. And if you continue to do that, again, people will just be like, well, that's the old system that we have, and they'll move away from that. Uh, I believe this is the future. And, you know, 7%, if the government says it's at 7%, who knows what the real numbers are? but 7% is the smallest they could all agree on. That is, right, we can't go below 7% because at a bare minimum, it's 7%. How much money are you earning with your uh, through the banks and things like that? Diddly squat. You're not even earning percent. Like, you know, you can go to things like Celsius and BlockFi and that, and they're coming out with 10%. That is only just beating the bare minimum. That's probably not the real... That's not the true indication. Again, there's some smart people out there that have said they believe inflation is anywhere from 12 to 15 plus percent. So that is scary. That is very, very scary. And that's why I'm in the crypto space because I am truly worried about this kind of stuff. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Does this worry you? Do you think you know, that they're going to be able to turn this around? Like, 
it is the US inflation rates, but you gotta remember the US dollar is the reserve currency for the world. So if US inflation rates are going up, everyone else gets hit even harder because our dollar is worth less and we have to pay more to get uh, those dollars. That's the way it works. So some people get confused and think, but that's in the US, that doesn't affect us. Yes, it does. It affects everyone because it is the world reserve currency. Hence why they're looking to get away from having the US dollar as the world reserve currency and having a basket of things. So it won't be just singly the US dollar, but don't get me wrong, the US dollar will most likely be kept in there. But then the pound and, you know, the sorry, the sterling and things like that. And hopefully Bitcoin could be part of that that would really make a difference. You know, the new Bretton Woods moment is what people are talking about. All right, last but not least, I want to show you a coin that I really like. And again, I'm never offering you financial advice. There's all sorts of issues with all cryptocurrencies, let alone this one. Synthetics, I've been in it for a really long time. I still really like the project. And this is what I'm seeing on the charts. A downwards falling wedge. These generally break bullish. But what we need to remember is it could still go down a lot more. So at the moment it's trading around about sort of $5 and again, TA is good until it's not. It doesn't mean it has to break somewhere by this line. We've already seen one big wick down, but I just get the feeling like it's gonna to get to a point where it's gonna pop. And it's not just the TA that makes me bullish. Now there was something out there, I can't remember where I read it and I can't find it, but it was basically Kane Warwick. He came out and said, and he's the creator, another Australian guy. I do like to back Australian projects. He says it looks like all the big VCs and whales and that have finally sold out of synthetics. Now that doesn't mean the project's dead. That just means they've got their money and they're now chasing other opportunities. That's the way it works with a lot of those projects. Eventually they sell out. So now, hopefully, if that's true, synthetics really should be governed by the community. Now, does that mean synthetics has to go up from here? No, it could be a dead project and dead in the water. I personally don't think so. I'm still bullish on synthetics and I'm seeing this chart pattern. And I like that he said it looks like all the big VCs and whales have, you know, sold their bags and moved on. So now it really can be community driven, but there's something else that has me really uh, hyped about synthetics at the moment, other than just we've come down. And currently this is like an 80% drop. So it really has come down and good projects can come down that much and have come down and they rebound. So 80% from its all time high, which was about $30 down to uh, around about here, sort of, which would be uh, $4.50. That's a big retracement and a roundabout, the sort of area, could be lower. Again, I mean that, look, we'll just measure it out. I mean, what is that kind of dip? That is absolutely crazy. That is 91%. <whistles> but again, once you do that, without getting that one sort of crazy wick, which really pushed it down, what we have here is an 84% retracement. It's a little bit up from there, 84%. So for me, I just get the feeling like we're probably going to come down somewhere to here and hopefully get a breakout. But again, it's not just based on the TA. It's what Kane said about all the VCs finally going out. So hopefully that means there's less sell pressure. But this tweet, deploying synthetics on multiple L1s will allow the project to achieve its potential. Kane's reply. I'm starting to come around to the idea of, de of deploying the Synthetics IO exchange contracts to multiple L1s. This is purely based on a concept that emerged recently for Synths to act as fast withdrawal bridges across networks. Synthetics has some weird properties. Uh, so a, I'm not sure what that means. Someone who you know knows computer lingo would have to tell me but I like the idea of synthetics going multi-chain. Multi-chain is the future. Yes, there will be one chain that will likely kind of dominate, possibly Ethereum, that's what we're all leading towards, but it might not be as well. And if that's true, then you want uh, any project to be able to be multi-chain. So I would really want synthetics network to go to poly, uh, not Polygon, 
because it, it's already on optimistic, so it doesn't really need polygon. It can go to polygon. Polka dot, sorry, polka dot is something that I'd like it to look at, and then also cosmos, and then from there you can start looking at Solana and all those kind of other things. But I think that is really good news. And what I really like about synthetics is there's a whole ecosystem around it now. They got Thales, they got Quenta, uh, they got uh, Alin. Oh God, what else there? I can't even remember. I'm having a mind blank at the moment. I, sh I can generally remember. I think that's about them all. And you got free airdrops just for being part of synthetics. And synthetics, well, the price has come down. The whole eco space around it has continued to grow. So synthetics is definitely something I'm looking at. And I bought a few synthetics the other day. Just a few. And I'm going to keep chipping away at it. Because really what I'm looking for is for it to start getting down into this kind of $4 range. Like right down into the $4 range. And again, it's not to say that it's going to break here. The TA is good until it's not. It could possibly have to come down to... Actually, that looks like a pretty good price. I'm going to say around about there. There's a lot of confluence. I'd be looking at about sort of $4, $4.10. That looks like a good price, but it may not come down there. And look, ladies and gentlemen, it may go lower. Maybe it goes to $2.50. Maybe it comes down to $1.50. Maybe it comes to sort of somewhere down here, 70 sort of 80 cents. I can't tell you exactly where it's going to bounce. I can't even tell you that it's is going to bounce all i can tell you is it's a project i like and this to me looks like it's getting ready to form a base and finally move higher but i could be wrong never financial advice all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that gain train it's come down some and unfortunately i think it's possible it comes down more love to be wrong and i'll see you next time